Hello and welcome to our 2014 review for the end of course exam. Today what we're going to be looking at is the benchmarks that you'll need to cover and uh, sample problems that you'll need to know in order to do well on the end of course exam. Now what I would do is kind of pause and review so you know if there's something on there and you need to read it and you take a little bit longer than the video allows, take a second to do that. Okay, we are going to start off first with a little clue. So if you can unscramble the letters in this clue, they are not given in order. Unscramble them and let me know. There will be a prize rating for you. Now our first letter in this mysterious clue is the letter E. Hmm. Alright, so our first benchmark is describe the concept of a function, use function notation, and determine whether a relation is a function, and link equations to functions. So there's a lot there. But what we need to remember about functions, well, for one, if you see a function in a coordinate plane, such as this, you can you are gonna need to know about the domain the range, and of course functions must pass the vertical line test, which means the x values uh, cannot repeat. Alright, so in this first example, a diver swims deeper underwater, water pressure, pounds per square inch, table shows the pressure for several depths of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it says which equation represents P the water pressure in square inches is a function of D. All right, so given our choices, looks like what we really need to do is find slope, or how much this changes each time. And if I look here, looks to me, since we're going up an even amount here, this side is pretty easy. This is, as you can see, plus 10. And this side is, looks like it's plus 4.3. All right, so if we want to find the slope of this, we take the change in y over the change in x, which would be 4.3 over 10. If we divide that, we get a slope of 0.43. Um, if we went backwards to find the y-intercept, this would be at 10 minus 0. Or 10 minus 10 is 0, and of course 4.3 minus 4.3 is also 0. So in this case, there would be no y-intercept, so it looks like the best answer is answer choice B. Did you get that right? If not, kind of look it over, see if you could figure out the same way that I just did. Alright, for our next problem, <clears throat> as you can see, there's a lot of reading. You can go through and read that. I'm going to cut to the chase here. It's $300 per month and three dollars and fifty cents per hour as represented this this would be kind of like thought of like a slope that's kind of like a wider sense so this is one month charges for a, for a child is six thirty seven seventy five what's the total number of hours so they're in this case giving us what the total is and we need to back into number of hours h now for I move on and figure out this value of h. Does that make sense to you? Look at the problem. Does it make sense that I would take this number and plug it in for almost the y? If not, go back and read the problem. For now, I'm going to solve this in the way we can solve it. We want to isolate the variable, so we do the opposite. When we do that, we have 3.5 h is equal to 337.75. And of course, when we do that, uh, last step, of course, we have to divide by 3.5. So this is a hua, and then we get h is equal to 337.75 divided by 3.5 is 96.5. So what that would mean total number of hours the child spent in childcare after preschool was 96 and a half hours. Again, just solving for a variable. Not too bad. Oh, so here we go. Our theme, in case you haven't figured this out, will be superheroes. 
and of course weird superhero images. While we're on here, let's take a second to read a shout out. This one just says, Lauren is the best. Very good, Lauren. And this one says, crank that nay nay. Alrighty. We'll crank it. Okay, so our next uh, benchmark that we need to learn is to, is to determine the domain and range of a relation. Okay, so I have a quick tip here from Michaela and Eddie. They were the first two students to attend uh, after school tutoring and they came up with a list of things that we should include and they said it was important to remember that the domain stands for the X values and the range stands for the Y values. Okay, so keep that in mind and if you see them, Eddie and Michaela say, thanks Eddie for those tips. Already, looks like we're going to need to use those tips. It says, and again, there's all this reading, 11 different days during a 500 day period. It says, what best describes the range? Well, if you remember from Eddie and Michaela's tips, the range stands for the Y values. And Y go up and down. So basically what we're looking at is what is the highest point of this graph, which I would either see at here or here, they're the same. So it goes up to 60. And the lowest point of the graph, which looks like it goes down to 10. And they're going to write this as an inequality. And it looks like our best answer choice, because it does touch, we'll include the equal to, would be answer choice C. I'll take a second and look at some of these other answer choices. Um, 0 to 80, this choice D is right here, is the distance from here to here, what they pick for the scale. Really not relevant. Uh, let's see, 1 to 500, that looks like what it might be on the X, which is the domain, but remember we're talking about the range. And 0 to 500, which is kind of similar. So, I think the best thing to do is just pay attention to if they're asking for the range or domain. And remember that the range is the Y values, domain is the X values. See where our graph goes in either domain or range read from the graph and you'll have your answer. Not too bad. Not too bad. And while we're here we can take a quick second before we go into our next benchmark. I'm going to read my next uh, shout out. This one just says Yeehaw! It's from Naisha Kirkland. Thanks Naisha. Very very helpful. Uh, I'm also going to reveal the next part of our puzzle. We revealed a letter in the very first slide and we're going to reveal another letter now, and that is the letter Y. I really need to cut three bookshelves from a board that is 1.8 meters long. That's where this number comes from. Second shelf is 15 cent centimeters longer than twice the shelf length. The remaining shelf is 5 centimeters longer than the first. So they actually did all the hard part translating this into an equation for you. So once you have the equation, and it says which of the following is the length of meters of the first shelf, when it even tells you that x is the length of the first shelf, means basically all we have to do is solve for x. Now if I don't have any coefficient here, that's a little exaggerated. If I don't have any coefficients in front of those x's, I can just add a 1, which tells me I have this, this, this as like terms, so 1 plus 2 is 3, plus another 1 is 4x. And I'm going to add this and this, because those are like terms. 0.15 plus 0 0.05 is going to give me 0 0.20. Bring everything else down. Now if I want to solve for x, I'm going to subtract. Subtract. And I get 4x is equal to 1.6 divided by 4. And what do you know? There's a little hua for you. 1.6 divided by 4 
would give you 0 0.4, which is answer choice A. What do you think? Would you be able to answer a question like this on the test? Again, these are dealing with functions. Oh, so my birthday's coming up. Anyone feel like making this cake for me? That would be awesome. Okay, so we looked last section solving linear equations. We did a lot of that this year. And next we're going to get into solving and graph simple compound inequalities. Difference between an equation and an equality. Equation, of course, has equal to sign. Inequality has the other symbol. All right, so we have two problems that are exactly the same. I bet we can get the same answer each. Not sure why I copied that one twice, but it happens. All right, and luckily, you know, you can cut through some of the stuff. They give you an equation. A is the amount you can spend before tax and tip, which of the following shows the solution to this inequality. So we're just trying to solve this. Well, an equation, inequalities are solved a lot, like equations, in that if you have a number outside parentheses, we're going to distribute it. Although, we can do that. I do notice that these are like terms. We can combine those. That's interesting. But let's go ahead and just distribute. It won't hurt. So this is a 1.2a plus. If I multiply that, I get 0.078a is less than or equal to 25 and if I combine those I get 1.278 a is less than or equal to 25 to get that by itself I'm just divide by 1 0.278. Oh, my handwriting is getting sloppy on that side of the screen. That's okay. So if we divide that, my best answer choice looks like answer choice D. Okay? So a few things. Remember, one, you solve an inequality just like an equation. There is one exception, as we have our inequality symbol, if I had divided this by a negative number, we would have to flip the sign, otherwise known as the special rule, which we did not have to use in this case. I am going to pass on a few more tips from Eddie and Michaela. If you are were to graph this, say you wanted to graph this inequality that we just found, you would put that on a number line. Mm, here's zero. There's your 19.56. Um, if we are using the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that's going to give us a closed circle. Versus if we did the less than or sorry, greater than or less than, that is the open circle. So in this case where we have a less than or equal to, that's going to be a closed circle on the number, shade it in, and of course this tells you the direction of shade because the variables first we would go to the left, less than to the left. Very good. Thank you, Michaela and Eddie. I hope you learned a lot. We'll pick up with this next time in part two of our end of course exam study. Again, if you need help with any of these materials or these questions, ask in class and I would be glad to help. Uh, you can also go back and rewatch, reread, pause, take as much time as you need to. Uh, good luck on the end of course exam and I will see you guys later.